Hey there guys, so today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on using contact within Digital Performer. So when you open Digital Performer, you'll get something like this. We already have contact with some tracks running to it, but we're going to start from scratch and I'm going to show you how to set things up and how MIDI works. So, first of all, we're just going to delete all of these. Okay. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to load in a MIDI file that I downloaded from the internet, which will make things a little easier to show. So we're going to go to File, Import MIDI File as Sequence, and ooh, now I just have to find it. There we go. Caccini Ave Maria. So this has been imported as a new sequence. Uh, sequences can be switched using this little selector in the upper right. If I go here, you see there's the MIDI file, and inside the MIDI file we have oboe and piano. So we're going to go to that other sequence, and we're going to delete this one. So now we just have our MIDI file. So right now, uh, this doesn't do anything. Especially if that this doesn't do anything because all it is is MIDI data. It's not running to an instrument. There's nothing to make sound. We need something to make sound and for that we're going to use contact. So right click, add track, uh, instrument track, native instruments, makers of contact, and we're going to do contact 5 stereo. All of these other ones are for if you're mixing in 5.1 or something else, but we want stereo. So once we insert that, the contact window pops up over here on the other monitor. And let's just go over a little bit of the anatomy of contact. So you have these main buttons here at the top. Uh, there are two ways to load libraries into contact. You can use this browser on the left and go to the libraries tab. Now these are what are called contact player libraries. That means that the maker of the sample library sent it to Native Instruments. Native Instruments packaged it up. Uh, the sample developer paid Native Instruments a good deal of money and Native Instruments sent them some license keys. That means that people can use these libraries, people can buy and use these libraries without owning the full version of Contact. Now, the vast majority of libraries are not Contact Player libraries. So let's take a look at one of those. Now this is a library that I made and I am broke so I did not want to pay Native Instruments several thousand dollars to make it a Contact Player library. The NKI is the main library, the kind of the, the definition file, and the samples go in the samples folder. So we can just drag and drop this NKI into here. There we go, the library is loaded. This will only work if you have the full version of Contact, otherwise it'll time out. So in general, libraries will have parameters and things you can tweak. Uh, all of these can be automated using MIDI CCs, all of these switches, all of that good stuff. All of these can be automated as well. Um, so our first step is going to be sending this MIDI data to contact. So how do we do that? Okay, well, first off, let's rename this vocals, because I'm not going to be using Hobo. I'm going to be using Claire Deemer's voice. Uh, and I'm going to color both of these something slightly less eye-searing. Okay. So, if we go to our mixer, we see here we have vocals and piano. These are both MIDI tracks. You see there's no input option because that's how MIDI works. If we take a look at contact, you see this library. This is the kind of the, the library interface. This is the part that is strictly contact. This is common to all contact libraries. We have MIDI channel A1. Uh, so right now VSTs only support one port, which is port A. Uh, and that's currently set to port A channel 1, which is good. Let's grab the piano as well. There we go. And you see contact automatically assigns that to channel A2, which is nice of him. So in the mixer, we're going to set the output of these to the appropriate MIDI channel. So for the vocals, we're going to go contact 5. Contact 5-1 means it's the first instance of contact that you've added. If we added more, it would be contact 5-2, all that good stuff. And we want MIDI channel 1. So contact 5, instance 1, channel 1. And for the piano, we're going to do contact 5, uh, 
instance one, channel two. And if we play this back, yay, we have sound now. Uh, so this works. This is good. Um, the first thing I'm going to do, you'll notice we don't have any vocals right now, and that's because they're playing out of the range of this library. You can see the range of a library by clicking on it and opening up the keyboard at the bottom. These blue keys are the range of notes that the library can play. If I click over here, it doesn't do anything. If I click in here... And it's the same with the piano. See, the piano has, understandably, quite a lot more range than the vocal library. So let's open up this in the MIDI editor. So we're going to right-click, do Open in MIDI editor. Surprise, surprise. And here's where I can edit MIDI data. Uh, let's scroll over and find that. There we go. Here's some notes. So first, I'm going to bring this down an octave. I believe this is... What is that? That's A3. So I'm just going to do Command-A to select all of them, and just drag this down to A2. You'll notice now we actually have some sound. So that's good. Now, if I play this back again, and we look at the mixer, you'll see that all of the audio from contact is going straight out of this one contact channel, which then goes straight to the master channel. This is just showing that there's MIDI happening, but the audio is all going through contact. Which is a problem, because you want to treat contact instruments just like you'd treat recorded instruments or live parts. You want to be able to mix them independently, you want to be able to apply effects, and edit, and such. And we can do that within contact. We can change the volume here, we can change the panning here, but that's really annoying to do when you can't control it from your DAW right now. So, how do we send these to separate channels? Well, that's what, uh, for that we're going to use the output menu of contact. So, similarly to the way that you can select the MIDI input for each instrument, you can select the audio output. See here it says output ST1, that means stereo 1 and output ST1 again. Now, ST1 for contact in DP is the, the channel that contact is loaded into. So what we're going to do, we're going to create two aux channels, one for each of these instruments, and send these to those channels. So let's come back into DP. We're going to do add track, uh, aux track, and I would do the key combination, but I'm not good with Mac keyboards. So let's rename these. This is going to be vocal audio. and piano audio. Let's uh, reorganize those real quick. Now within contact we need to set up some stereo outputs. Right now we only have the main output and an additional one plus a 5.1 mix which we don't really need but you know what? Let's delete that 5.1 mix. Now we're gonna add a channel. We want one channel we want it to be a stereo channel. Right now, these are connected to 1 and 2, and 3 and 4. So we're going to connect this to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. There we go. We have a new output, 5 and 6. We're going to rename these just to make things a little more clear. Vocal and piano. So now we're going to set the audio output of this to vocal, and we're going to set the audio output of the piano to piano big surprise. So that's good. Now we just need to set the inputs on these audio tracks to vocal and piano. So we're going to come into the mixer, go to vocal audio, we're going to do new stereo bundle, scroll down to contact. So this is the same deal, contact 5, instance number 1, channels 3 and 4. So 3 and 4 is the vocals, that's good. And then for the piano we want new stereo bundle, same thing, scroll down to contact, contact 5, instance 1, channels 5 and 6. So now if I play this back, you'll see that the audio from the piano is going through here, and the, piano, the audio from the vocals is going through here. And nothing is coming out of this channel. So that's good, that's exactly what we want. Next up, 
uh, well, we can create an aux send for these. So let's do that real quick. There's a nice easy way of doing that. You just click up here. You go to uh, new aux track via new stereo bundle. We're going to do bus 1 and 2. You see it automatically makes a new aux track. And now I can set this one to that same bus that we just made, bus 1 and 2. So both of these tracks are getting sent to bus 1 and 2, and this aux has bus 1 and 2 as the input. And we're going to rename this reverb because that's what I'm going to use it for. And this, a lot of contact instruments will be very dry, especially the ones we have here in the studio, so adding reverb is not a bad idea. Some more expensive libraries are recorded in, in large concert halls and don't really need that. But So let's add Proverb is the default impulse response convolution reverb that comes with Digital Performer. Here is Proverb. And let's load uh, like a hall. Let's put her in a church. Let's put her in a, in a large church. Okay. Uh, I think once we play that back, we should be Proverb does this sometimes. I'm not quite sure how to fix it. It's a bit weird. But anyway, the essential is that we have our reverb track now. Uh, I'm going to reorder these again and color that reverb track something different. Great. I'm actually going to hide this contact track because we don't really need it anymore. And we don't really need the MIDI tracks in here either. So now we have just our audio tracks. So now you can control the level of reverb. Oh, I thought I had a... Uh-oh. Did I set up a bus? I set up a bus on the wrong channel. I'm sorry, guys. You want the bus to be on these two channels, not the main contact channel. So let's hide contact again. So now you can control the amount of send that gets sent to the reverb using this knob. It's just a typical aux send. You can control the dry signal with this and the reverb with this. If you set there's a little tiny P right here. If you click that P, that means pre-fader. So that means this level will be fixed. Even if this is all the way down, it'll still be sending audio at this level to the reverb channel. If I turn this off, now it's at zero. If I turn this to zero, and you see this is at plus four, that means that this will always be at plus four relative to this fader. So depending on the situation, either one can be useful, but that's what that does. So that's really everything you need to know to set up virtual instruments inside of Contact, inside of DP. Uh, I believe Contact has eight stereo outputs you can use, so you can load up to eight instruments inside of one Contact instance. Uh, and that is a better way of working than using eight separate Contact plugins. Um, yeah, so in another video I'll talk more about uh, working with MIDI in DP and also techniques uh, when using sample libraries and things to keep in mind. But until then, uh, hopefully this was enough to get you started.